Welcome viewers. It's time to talk about preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's about to come. He's about to appear in the sky. The angels are ready to sound the trumpets. Michael and the other angels are ready. Our Lord Jesus Christ is ready, but are we ready? We need to prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is about to come. We have to prepare our hearts. Besides preparing our hearts, we have to do what will cause us to end up with mansions in heaven. The message I got this week is many people are living in mansions, in big houses here on earth. But when they die, they will end up in hell where they will have no space. Their space in, in hell is so limited, it's so small compared to the space they are living on here on earth. Maybe they've got two bedroom houses, maybe they've got three bedroom houses, maybe they've got six bedroom houses here on earth. But when they die, they'll find themselves in hell where their space is limited. Maybe they'll be in just one room in hell where there's like 20 people in that, in that one room. Or, or they'll be in a place where they are chained down in hell. Their, hand, their feet are chained down, their hands are chained down, they can't even move, there's no space for them to move. Comparing with the space they have here on earth, comparing with the mansions they have here on earth. Why? Because what they did did not cause them to go to heaven. What they are doing is causing them to end up in hell where they'll have limited space, but here on earth they've got mansions. So we've got to do what will cause us to go to heaven. We've got to do what will cause us to, to have mansions in heaven. Some of us will think our Lord Jesus Christ went to prepare mansions for us. But remember, he only provides labor for the mansion, for your mansion in heaven. You provide material for building of your mansion. You start with the land. The day you give your life to Jesus, you leave nothing in heaven. The day you give your life to Jesus, then you start serving the house of the Lord, you start going to the house of the Lord, you serve in the house of the Lord, then you start building your mansion. You start with nothing. Then you, you get it. As you continue to go into the building, as you continue to serve in the house of the Lord, you end up with a, a land. Just like when people look for land here on earth to buy, to build their house. When you have land, they, there will be just your name on the land, on the piece of land. Then as you continue to save and you continue to save, material will be accumulating. They will be accumulating materials on your land for the building of your mansion. When you have saved enough and accumulated enough materials, then they will build your mansion. So having a mansion in heaven depends on what you do, especially so winning, winning souls, saving in the house of God. Everything you do in the house of the Lord, even giving, offering in the house of God, contributes towards you building your mansion in heaven. So don't ever think that our Lord Jesus Christ went to be a mansion for us. No, you contribute towards the building of your mansion. Our Lord Jesus Christ provides labor for the building of the mansion. But you provide the material, you provide the land by what you do here on earth. Saving in the house of God, going to evangelize on the streets, ministering to people, saving people, going to people you need, helping people. As you do so, you contribute towards the building of your mansion in heaven. This is why some people who just give their lives to, to, to the Lord and then they die soon after giving their lives to Jesus without being able to contribute towards the building of their mansions. They don't have mansions in heaven. But those that contribute towards the building of their mansions, they've got their mansions. So we've got to do what will cause us to end up with mansions in heaven. So we've got to contribute towards the buildings of our mansions in heaven. We should not just contribute, we should not just work hard to build mansions in here, here on earth so that we live in mansions here on earth. Then when we die, we'll go to hell where the space is limited. Maybe you'll be in a pit where they, so many are, people are in that pit, they are just burning. You don't even have a mansion, you don't even have a room, no. We've got to work hard towards contributing to the building of our mansion so that we've got our mansions in, in heaven decorated to our, according to our own colors and our, our, what we like. But for that to happen, we have got to work towards it. It's not up to the Lord, it's up to you what you do here on earth. So don't do what will cause you to end up in hell, where there's no space for you. But do what will cause you to end up, you, to what will cause you to end up in heaven. Where you have got a mansion, a mansion, a mansion, not a pit in hell. Today, I want to talk about a step that we make towards hell whenever we do what is not right before God. Works of the flesh. Today, I'm talking about stubbornness. Rita, stubbornness is the work of the flesh. Stubbornness does not cause us to go to heaven. Stubbornness 
takes us to hell. Why? Because it's under the world. It is of the devil. Whenever we are stubborn, don't think we are just being stubborn. But we have to know that being stubborn does not take us to heaven. Being stubborn takes us to hell. Stubbornness is a sin. Rita, it's unfortunate. Some people, some Christians in churches, some even serving in the house of the world, they are stubborn. They practice stubbornness. They, teach, they even teach others to be stubborn because they don't know it's a sin. Stubbornness is a sin. Stubbornness is not of a world. God is not here whenever his children are stubborn. Because stubbornness does not take us to heaven. Stubbornness takes us to hell. Whenever you are stubborn, know that you are, you are making a step towards hell. You continue to be stubborn. You find yourself in the middle of hell, burning with fire, with this fire, non-stop fire, where the wind dies not, where the fire does not stop. And there's a stench, a smell that you cannot even stand. Why? Because of the flesh that is burning. Whenever you're stubborn, remember where stubbornness will take you to. It will take you to hell. Where you will burn and burn and burn and burn and burn non-stop simply because of stubbornness. Don't think you're just being stubborn. But know that just being, if you think you're just being stubborn, know that just being stubborn is taking you to hell. In any way you're being stubborn. It's time to repent. In any way you've been teaching others to be stubborn, it's time to stop teaching them to be stubborn and to tell them that stubbornness is not of God. Stubbornness is of the devil. In any way you've been stubborn, know that you were making the devil happy and you were making the Lord unhappy. Why? Because stubbornness is of the devil. So whenever you're being stubborn, you're serving the devil. You're not serving the Lord. Rita, when you want to serve the Lord, you run away from stubbornness. Why? Because stubbornness is the, of the devil and stubbornness will take you to hell. So we should run away from what takes us to hell and run towards what takes us to heaven. The Bible says in Psalms 82, Psalms 81, 12. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart, trouble in their own counsels. What does the word say about the heart? The word says we should keep the word of the Lord in our hearts. As the word says in, in Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. The word says so again in Deuteronomy 11, verse 18, that we should keep the word of the Lord in our hearts. But instead of keeping the word of the Lord in our hearts, we are now keeping stubbornness in our heart. When there was supposed to be the word of the Lord in the heart, there is now stubbornness. And then after that, we expect to go to the faith. Rita, yet we have kept stubbornness, where the, word say, where the Lord said we should keep his word. In Deuteronomy 6, 6, Deuteronomy 6, verse 6, he says we should keep his word in our hearts. But where we should keep his words in our hearts, we have kept stubbornness. So we've gone astray. The word is telling us in Psalms 81, 12, I'll read it again. So I gave them over to their own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. So stubbornness is in the heart. But we should not have stubbornness in the heart. What should we have in the heart? The word of the Lord. But instead of the word of the Lord in the heart, there is now stubbornness. We have to take, to get rid of stubbornness. We have to remove that stubbornness from our hearts and keep the word of the Lord in our hearts. Not stubbornness. Stubbornness is not the Lord. Stubbornness is of the devil. We should run away from stubbornness. Because every time we are stubborn, we are walking towards hell. Every time we are stubborn, we are making the devil happy, not our Lord. We should only do what makes our Lord happy. And what makes our Lord happy is keeping his word in our hearts, not stubbornness. Rita, in any way we have been stubborn, up until now we have got to repent and go back to the Lord and ask him to forgive us for being stubborn because stubbornness is not of the Lord, because stubbornness is of the devil. Yeah, broke also, so we've got to run away from stubbornness. It's not a good thing to be stubborn. It's not a good thing to teach others to be stubborn. It's, it's a good thing to run away from stubbornness. It's a good thing to teach others not to be stubborn. Rosa, why? Because stubbornness is of the devil. Rita, let's go after what is of the Lord. What is of the Lord is keeping the word of the Lord in our heart. Praying always, having repentant hearts, not stubborn hearts. Keeping the word of the Lord in our hearts. Writing the word of the Lord in our hearts, not stubbornness. But removing stubbornness from our heart, 
from our hearts. In any way, we have been keeping stubbornness in our hearts. It's time to put an end to it and keep the word of the Lord in our hearts. The Bible says in Isaiah 46, verses 12, Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, who are far from righteousness. So, people who are stubborn-hearted, they are far from righteousness. When you have got stubbornness in you, you are far from righteousness. When you are stubborn, you are far from righteousness. So, stubbornness and righteousness go opposite each other. The moment you know you are stubborn, know that you are far from righteousness. The moment you keep stubbornness in your heart, know that righteousness is not close to you. It's not me saying so, it's the word. Rita, in Isaiah 46, 12, the word says, Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, who are far from righteousness. So whenever you are stubborn-hearted, know that you are far from righteousness. When you want to be righteous, then you've got to run away from stubbornness. You cannot be stubborn and be righteous at the same time. Stubbornness and righteousness do not go hand in hand. Stubbornness and righteousness do not work hand in hand. So we've got to run away from stubbornness so that we, we go towards righteousness. We've got to run away from stubbornness so that we work towards righteousness. Stubbornness is not of God. Stubbornness is of the devil. Stubbornness will take you to hell. Whenever you are stubborn, know that you are making a step towards hell. I don't care where you are stubborn. Whether you are a school child, stubborn to your teachers. Whether you are a, a child, stubborn to your parents. Whether you are a church member, stubborn to lead church leadership. Whether you are a worker, stubborn to your, to your bossy at work. Wherever you are stubborn, who, whoever you are stubborn to, whenever you practice stubbornness, it doesn't matter where you practice that stubbornness, whenever you practice it, just know that you are making a step towards hell. Maybe it's on the trains or on the buses. You see people checking bus passes and tickets, and then you are stubborn towards them. It doesn't matter where you are stubborn. As long as you are stubborn, what matters is you are stubborn. What matters is you are keeping stubbornness in your heart. What matters is you are, is you are practicing stubbornness, and that stubbornness will take you to hell. Rita, it will not take you to heaven, but it takes you to hell. Why? Because it is of the devil. And whenever you practice stubbornness, know that you are saving the devil. You are not saving the Lord. You did not give your life to Jesus so that you serve the devil. You gave your life to Jesus so that you serve the Lord. So if you want to serve the Lord, be righteous so that you serve the Lord. So you do what the Lord says you should do. You keep your word in his heart. But whenever you are stubborn, know that you are running away from the word of the Lord. Know that you are running away from what the word says you should do. Know, know that you are running away from what makes the Lord happy towards you. Whenever you are stubborn, he doesn't look at you and smile. He looks at you and you'll be unhappy that his child, the one that gave their lives to him, are being stubborn, are doing the work of the devil, are saving the devil by being stubborn, are following the, the words of the devil by being, being stubborn. In any way you have been stubborn, it is time to repent and go back to the Lord and ask him to forgive you. It doesn't matter how many times you were stubborn, stubborn before, just go down on your knees and ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you and welcome you back. And then from now on, change. Don't be stubborn again. And don't teach others to be stubborn. Why? Because stubbornness is not of God. It is of the devil. Stubbornness does not take us to heaven. It takes us to hell. There is nothing good that comes out of stubbornness. But hell at the end. Hell after everything else. Hell. Because of stubbornness, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes, we will not be able to be translated and meet with him in the sky. Why? Because of stubbornness. So we have got to run away from stubbornness. It's not of God. It is of the devil. It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. Stubbornness is what we should run away from. Stubbornness is what we should avoid. It is time to go back to what the word says. It is time to go back to keeping the word of the Lord in our hearts and run away from stubbornness, and avoid stubbornness, because it's not of God. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, verses 23, For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. 
So stubbornness is iniquity. Stubbornness is as idolatry. I'll read it again. First Samuel 15, verses 23. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So when you are, whenever you are being stubborn, know that you are committing sin. In case some of us who did not know, we have been being stubborn so many times, not knowing that it's a sin. Stubbornness is a sin. Stubbornness is not of God. Stubbornness is of the devil. Stubbornness that does not make God to be happy. Stubbornness does not cause God to look at us and smile. Stubbornness takes us to hell. Stubbornness does not take us to heaven. Stubbornness is a sin as idolatry. It's iniquity. So we've got to run away from stubbornness. It's not of God. When, whenever we are stubborn, we have rebelled against the Lord because we are now keeping stubbornness in our hearts instead of keeping the word of the Lord in our hearts. What does the word of the Lord say? It says, love one another. But the people that you should love, you are now being stubborn towards them. Whether it's your boss, instead of loving your boss and respecting your boss, you're now being stubborn towards them. Whether it's your parent, instead of being, uh, instead of loving your parent and showing them love, you're now being stubborn towards your parents. Whether it's your teacher, instead of loving your teacher and showing them respect and love, you're now being stubborn towards them. The one you are stubborn towards, you don't show them love, but you show them stubborn. But the word did not say, be stubborn to one another. The word says, love one another. So we should keep the word of the Lord. When we keep the word of the Lord, we do what the word says. Love one another. Do this and that. Or what the word says. Or what the commandments say. You know, when you are stubborn, then you can even go all up to a point of stealing from them. But the Bible did not say steal from each other. The Bible says you shall not steal. When you don't have that word in you, that way that says love one another. That way that says you shall not steal from each other. You shall not kill. You shall obey your parents. When you don't have that word in you, you have stubbornness. So you are being rebellious towards the Lord. And the end of it all is hell. Why? Because stubbornness cannot take you to heaven. Why? Because people who are stubborn, they cannot enter hell. Heaven. They enter hell. Because there's no place for stubborn people in heaven. But there's a place for stubborn people in hell. People who are stubborn here on earth, the end, their end result is burning non-stop in hell. But people who keep it, they are the word of God in their heart, they will end up in heaven. Rejoicing. Enjoying in heaven. Why? Because they were not rebellious. Why? Because they ran away from rebellion, from stubbornness. Here on earth, they refuse to be rebellious. They refuse to be stubborn. But people who keep stubbornness in their hearts, who are rebellious, is the Bible saying, it says in 1 Samuel 15, 23, for rebellion is, the, is, is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So stubbornness is as iniquity. We have got to run away from it. Stubbornness is not of God. Stubbornness is of the devil. Stubbornness does not take us to heaven. Stubbornness takes us to hell. We have got to run away from what takes us to hell and run after what takes us to heaven and seek after what takes us to heaven. The word, the commandments of the Lord, his judgments and statutes takes, will take us to heaven. That's what we have to run after. That's what we have to keep in our hearts. And no stubbornness. Remove stubbornness. Get rid of stubbornness. Get away with the stubbornness. Repent in any way of being stubborn. So that at the end you'll be able to go to heaven. And be with our Lord Jesus Christ. So that when he comes, you'll be able to meet with him in the sky. And go and be a partaker of the marriage supper. Rita, but when there is stubbornness in our hearts, we cannot go with him when he comes. Even when the, stub when the trumpets are sounded, we will not be able to hear the sounds of the trumpets. Then he comes. When he comes, we will see him. Every eye will see him. But we will not be able to go. We will see him and we will see others going. But we will not be able to go. Why? Because of stubbornness. Rita, so we've got to run away from stubbornness. We've got to repent in any way we've been stubborn. Up until now, and do what the word of the Lord says we should do. Keep his commandments, his judgments, and statutes. Run away from, from what is not of God. The Bible says in Psalms 78, 8. 
and may not be like their fathers. A stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. So when we are stubborn, our spirit is not faithful to God. When we are stubborn, our hearts are not right with God. This is what the word is saying. In Psalms 78, verses 8, and, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that, that did not set its heart aright, and whose spirit was not faithful to God. Our spirit has got to be faithful to God. If our, spirit is, if our spirits are faithful to God, then we run away from stubbornness. Then we refuse to be stubborn. Then we repent in any way of being stubborn. Then we, we seek the Lord. We keep his judgments, his commandments, his statutes, and seek after him, and run after him, and save him only. Why? Because we, want, we do not want to be rebellious. We do not want to be stubborn. Because stubbornness is of the devil. I just want to thank God for his goodness and mercy for you to be watching this program. Because of his goodness and mercy, I pray for you today that you repent in any way you have been stubborn and run away from stubbornness. Why? Because stubbornness is of the devil. Stubbornness is not of God. The Bible tells us again in Exodus 13:15. Exodus 18, 15 says, And it came to pass, when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of men and the firstborn of beasts. Therefore I sacrifice to the therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all males that open the womb, but all the firstborn of my of my sons I redeem. So why the firstborn of Pharaoh in Egypt way died, it was because Pharaoh was stubborn. Stubbornness of Pharaoh led to death. Pharaoh was stubborn in hindsight. Pharaoh refused to, to listen to the whole world that Moses was saying because of stubbornness. This led to the firstborns in Egypt dying. Why? Because of stubbornness. So we've got to run away from stubbornness. Why? Because stubbornness is not of God. Because stubbornness is not good. Rita, we've got to run away from stubbornness. It leads to death. Now, these days, when we talk about death, we don't talk about death, death immediately. When we talk about death, we talk, we talk about death when you die, you go to hell. That represents death. But during the time of Pharaoh, they died immediately. The firstborns died immediately. Why? Because of stubbornness. Why? Because Pharaoh was stubborn. The stubbornness of Pharaoh caused to the death of all the firstborns. Why? Simply because Pharaoh was stubborn. Stubbornness is not a good thing. If Pharaoh was not stubborn, all the firstborns were not going to die. But all the firstborns died because Pharaoh was stubborn. It was because of stubbornness that caused the death of the firstborns in Egypt. Rita, we've got to run away from stubbornness. It's not of God. It's not a good thing. It's very bad. It's of the devil. Well, in any way we've been stubborn, we've got to repent and go back to the Lord. We have, to, we have to repent and change our ways and amend our ways because stubbornness is not a good thing. Stubbornness is of the devil, so we've got to run away from it and do what the word of the Lord says we should do. And do what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, verse 6. It says we should keep the word of the Lord in our heart, not stubborn. In any way we've been stubborn, we've got to repent. In any way we've been stubborn, we've got to change. In any way we've been telling others to be stubborn, it's time to, to put an end to it and tell them not to be stubborn. In any way we've been teaching others to be stubborn, it's time to teach them to love one another, respect one another, and keep the judgments, the commandments, and the statutes of the Lord. So that when our Lord Jesus comes, we'll be able to go with him, we'll be able to see him in the sky, and go and join him in the sky. We'll be able to hear the sound of the trumpets and go and be partakers of the marriage supper. Only if we repent from being stubborn, only if we run away from being stubborn, because stubbornness is not of the Lord, but it is of the devil, it is time to change. Rita, it is time to repent and go back to the Lord. It is time to repent and seek the Lord and save the Lord with all our hearts and get rid of stubbornness and repent and change in any way we're being stubborn, wherever we're stubborn, it doesn't matter where, whether in our families, at school, in churches, at work, on the road, maybe when you're going shopping, you go there and you're stubborn, everywhere you go, you're just stubborn. It is time to change. 
if you want the word is preached to you you don't want to listen you don't want to go to do what the word says you should do that is stubbornness we've got to repent when the way when you're told to do by the word what to do you don't want to do it why because of stubbornness we have got to change. We have got to repent. We go back to the Lord, ask Him to have mercy upon us, ask Him to forgive us in any way of being stubborn. We have got to change now and go back to the Lord and beg Him for mercy, ask Him to forgive us, so that we'll be able to go with Him when He comes, so that we'll be able to hear the sound of the trumpets, so that when others are translated, we'll be able to be translated and go with Him and go and join Him and be partakers of the marriage supper. The Bible says. In Deuteronomy 9, verses 27. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do not look on the stubbornness of these people or on their wickedness or their sin. So stubbornness is sin. Deuteronomy 9, Moses was praying for the children of Israel when they had become stubborn and gone astray. And Moses had to pray for them, he had to ask God to forgive them. He had to ask God to remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who were not stubborn. But the people that were with Moses had gone stubborn, he had gone astray. And now Moses was asking God to forgive them, not look at their iniquity, not look at their stubbornness, and remember the promise that he had promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who were not stubborn. But this generation had been stubborn, just like our generation. Is being stubborn. We are being stubborn. We are not keeping the word of the Lord in our heart. Instead of keeping the word of the Lord in our hearts, we are keeping stubbornness. We are being stubborn. But it is time to repent and go back to the Lord. It is time to repent and do what the Lord says we should do. It is time to repent and keep the word of the Lord in our hearts so that we'll be able to go with Him when He comes, so that we'll be able to be partakers of the marriage supper. The trumpets are about to be sounded. The angels are ready. We have got to repent now. We've got to go back to the Lord now. We've got to ask Him to forgive us now so that we'll be able to go with Him when He comes.